welcome to Sweet Tomato Vine Homestead. I'm Linda. Today I am in the kitchen because I have some projects that I'm going to be doing in my kitchen today. First of all, I want to show you all some of the new purchases that I made for the homestead. And y'all, I just want to show you some things that if I find some good um, things that I think that work good on my homestead, then I will be sharing those with you all to be in need of those same items. So that is why I will be showing you some of the items that I purchased for the homestead. Like this three-piece stainless steel colander. This is something that I got for my kitchen. And I mean, these are going to really come in handy for me because I am always needing something that I can uh, strain things with, like rice. Whenever I'm getting ready to strain things, my regular colander will allow my rice to go right through. So I was in search of some of these. And when I looked at uh, Walmart, they were uh, like $5 more expensive than they were on um, Amazon. I was very surprised to get them uh, more reasonable at Amazon than at Walmart. It took a moment for them to arrive. They took a little longer than the items usually do, but they still came earlier than they said that they would. So I'm happy to have found these. And I purchased these gloves that I need because I go through a lot of gloves on the homestead. And so these gloves are some gloves that I also got from Amazon. And they came as a box of 36. There are 36 pairs of gloves in this box. And I have already been wearing them, but I never had uh, shown you all the gloves. And so I just wanted to show them to you. You could get them in a couple of different uh, colors. So I chose, I think I got another color in here. I did not go all the way down the box. Yeah, I, I have some yellow ones, yellow and black, and then I got black and green. So I am excited about having these because you know you're always going to need some gloves on the homestead when you're working out in your garden. And especially with the uh, season beginning to cool down, you will be needing these uh, to also keep your hands warm out in your garden. So I was very, uh, I was very happy to get a box of 36. Um, I will link them down below and also the colors. I will link them. These are not uh, sponsored. These are just some things that I found and I just wanted to show to you all. I also went ahead and purchased another spray. Y'all know I've been uh, I've been leaving these sprayers out in the heat and they have been uh, they have been bursting on me because once that pressure builds up in them, even if you don't leave them in the heat, when the pressure builds up in them, they will burst. So I have been I had left mine outside with uh, fluid in it and the pressure built up and then when I went back out there to use it, a little hole was in the bottom and that happened to me I think a couple times. So. I ended up getting another one. This time I'm going to try to be more careful with it. I'm going to try not to uh, leave this one outside. Next thing I purchased is a pickling line. And the pickling line, you can use this when you're making your pickles. If you want to add this to your uh, recipe to make sure that your pickles remain um, fresh and crisp. But that is not why, that is not the only reason I will be using this pickling line. I purchased this pickling line because, because I found that you can use this pickling line to store your eggs. And y'all, I have at one point had a hundred eggs in the house. That is during the early part of the summer when the chickens were just laying eggs. I mean, we were, and I was just get, I was boxing eggs and people were giving me boxes and I was uh, just giving away eggs. So now I can go ahead and I can store my eggs by using this pickling line. And I'm gonna show you how I'm going to do it. It is a very simple process. All you're going to do is to take your eggs and you want to take your some clean eggs and what I mean by clean eggs are just eggs that don't have anything on them. Now you don't want to have a crack. Now this egg have, has a crack in it. So you do not want to put a cracked egg in there. You want to go ahead and if you can, go ahead and use any cracked eggs that you have. But you want to make sure if there's no soil or anything on your eggs. Go ahead and just wipe them and put them into what I'm using is a gallon jar. 
Okay, I got another one with a crack. Okay, so you want to be careful. Make sure there are no cracks. Make sure your eggs are clean. But do not wash your eggs. Do not wash them because that, like this one is dirty. So I'm going to leave that one in there. You do not want to wash your uh, film, the natural coating of the egg. You do not want to remove that. So you just want to put all of your eggs in the jar. Be careful not to break any eggs. Make sure that there is no soil on it. So that is going to require you checking each individual egg. I'm going to do this with my right hand so I won't be dropping them and breaking them while I'm trying to put them in there. Make sure that the eggs are clean. Free of any soil, clean but not washed, and free of any soil. Any ones that I see that have a little dirt on there, too much for me to just wipe off like this, then I won't be putting them in here. Yes, y'all, sometimes egg gonna be uh gonna have some soil on it when you bring them inside because they're out there in the chicken coop and it might rain if it's muddy and the chickens are out there laying eggs, then those eggs can get dirty. Okay, so I'm gonna go to another carton. I'm just checking these eggs out. I'm going to see if I can get through without breaking one. You can leave these eggs in here for up to a year. I've heard uh, people say that they left them longer, but we're just going to, I'm going to use a year for my goal that, you know, I don't want to try to leave them longer than a year, but do your research and, you know, see what you think about it and how long you would be willing to leave these eggs up. But my goal is to not have to just be uh, stressed about trying to get rid of these eggs at a certain period of time. When uh, occasions may come up and you may need these eggs that you have been just giving away. Now, if you sell eggs and you know you you're gonna be you know you're gonna be selling your eggs, then you don't have to do this. But if you know that your family eats eggs, but they don't eat them, you know, like they're not eating. We, sometimes we get a dozen eggs a day. Yesterday we got five, and it's like that um, the eggs were kind of you know like they're kind of slacking off. I have not went out and got the eggs today, but. Uh, the day before that, I had a dozen. So, it just varies. But you want to make sure that you don't have to keep these eggs a long time. These eggs, as long as you don't refrigerate them, the longer they'll last. Once you refrigerate them, then the their, uh, time that they'll stay good is going to be uh, less once you refrigerate them. So, it's best to... Bring them inside the house. Don't wash them. And keep them at room temperature. Okay, I've almost got my jar filled. And I am very excited about this method because of the fact we were just giving away eggs. You know, I don't mind sharing my eggs, but, you know, we, we want to keep some of them. And so I would rather, you know, if we can, just go ahead and keep some eggs. We were giving away a lot of eggs. So I am going to, um, now I need to measure. I'm going to put two tablespoons 
You all do your research and you decide how much I have. I've seen um, some that said one tablespoon because you need one ounce to a quart of water. At least an ounce of the pickly lime to a quart of water. But that is a liquid ounce. So when you're doing a dry ounce, that could vary. So that is why I chose to, I put two tablespoons. Do your research and decide which one you think is the right one. Because as I said, I've seen different um, amounts listed. Okay, so now you just want to pour your lime in your water over your eggs. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do another quart. And that line is really dusty, so you want to get back. You don't want to stand right there behind it and inhale it, because I can see the dust going up. So make sure that you stir it in really good. And go ahead and fill your container. Cover your eggs. Make sure that your eggs are covered. And since I put two tablespoons, I feel like I can safely go ahead and pour a little bit more water in here to make sure that my eggs are covered. And if I need to go in here, I can go in here. I can take some of these eggs out. I can put some more eggs in. However I need to do it. As long as I'm storing this egg, these eggs, I can start another container and just continue to and just continue to store these eggs. Okay, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna put 10 8 on here so I can remember the date that I put these eggs into this jar. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in a cool dark place where I can store them. And if I need to go in here and get them during the winter months, when the chickens aren't laying that many eggs, then I'll have them in store. So uh, I just want to share this with you all in case anyone has a lot of extra eggs and just has not known what to do to them, been giving away all your eggs like I have. This is a way that you can go ahead and store those eggs and have your eggs whenever you need them. Oh, and I also wanted to show you all these bottles that I purchased. And these are just, they're like some little jars. And they are some... I really seriously thought that when I ordered them that I was ordering some glass jars, but there's a little amber jar. And these are just some that I'm going to be, it's like plexiglass. I'll be using these when I make my salves, my ointments, or my deodorants will go in here. So I just wanted to share this with you all. I bought these on Amazon also, and there are, there are 20 of these. And so I just wanted to show those to you all in case someone's looking for something to uh, put their salves in. Then they got these little amber jars that you can use to put your salves and your ointments in. Okay, so next thing I'm going to be doing is, yeah, I got to take care of some of these uh, peppers and some of these eggplants that I have in here. So, y'all, we're just going to cut, we're just going to wash them, cut them up, and put them in the freezer. Okay, so what I'm doing is cutting up my peppers. I have a lot of peppers in here. I have bell peppers. I have these long peppers like this. I've got 
these uh, red jalapeno peppers. I've got a lot of different peppers. These uh, sweet peppers like this. And what I'm doing is I am just cutting them up. I'm removing the seeds and I have my seeds right here. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have a mix seed. And you know, you, you can purchase mixed seeds online. A lot of times I do purchase mixed seeds online. I have mixed hot pepper seed or mixed uh, sweet peppers. In this case, I'm gonna have just mixed seeds. So I didn't wanna throw these seeds away, but I don't wanna take the time to go through here and label them all because right now I'm just uh, doing this in, you know, just kind of fast. So if I run up on a variety, I just wanna make sure that I get some uh, more of those seeds and I may take the time to go ahead and do, you know, those seeds separately. Now like, okay, some of these seeds are very plentiful in some of these peppers, but some of these peppers only have a few seeds in them. But this is not a hot pepper. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to put my gloves on cause I am running, you know, into some hot peppers like this red jalapeno pepper. And so I do not want to uh, have my fingers burning or have or be it you know later on forget and this uh capsaicin will get into your skin and then you can rub it into your eyes so i want to make sure that i am protecting my hands and my eyes so i'm going to put my gloves on and i'm going to be cutting these peppers up and then whatever uh scraps that i have I'll be putting it in my into my Vigo composter right here, and then I will be taking it and pouring it into my garden. Okay, so now I have a bag of sweet uh, peppers, mostly bell peppers and some other peppers that are sweet peppers. And when I get ready for some bell peppers, I have some available and I'm flattening my bag out so they'll be able to fit into my freezer better. I learned the hard way not to uh, just put those bags in there any kind of way. So that is how I'll be doing my pepper. And now I'm going to do some of my eggplant. Got some more seeds that fell off. I'm trying to collect most of my seeds. And y'all, it, it might not be the best way to save the seeds, but it, this is a lot of seeds. And I didn't want to sit here and try to separate all of these seeds. So that is the way I chose to do. Well, I'll just plant some miscellaneous, miscellaneous seeds. Cause that basically what I did this season, I planted a lot of miscellaneous seeds because there had been a seed mix up and when I got ready to do my seeds, I did not have the seeds that I thought I had. I did not have the pepper seeds that I thought I had. I had a lot of different pepper seeds. Okay, so now I'm gonna slice up some of my eggplant. And I washed my eggplant and I do not uh, blanch my eggplant because I found that blanching the eggplant only adds more water to it. And we want to try to get the water out of the eggplant when we're preparing it. So what I do when I uh, get ready to prepare my eggplant is I salt it down and then put it, I, I like to put mine in the air fryer. And um, after I salt it and let some of the water drain out and that way it, uh, will crisp up, especially if I'm putting it in recipes like eggplant parmesan. 
Now, if I'm gonna fry it, I'll let it uh, drain and then, I'll, I'll salt it, let it drain, and then uh, go ahead and fry it. And I cut it different ways. Just depends on what I'm gonna be using it for. These would make a uh, good eggplant parmesan. Uh, sometimes I make them into like uh, eggplant fries, which would I would just cut them. And then go back and cut them again. Just slice them down like this. This could be added to a soup or a stew, add to lasagna. And I go straight to the bag with them. I feel like if I have to, if I go ahead and rinse them, I mean, if I go ahead and blanch them, then uh, they just would be entirely too uh, soggy. I can get some more into this bag. And I just like to cut that, remove that uh, blossom in. Now, if I'm going to add these to soup or stew, I don't worry about uh, removing, I don't worry about uh, getting the water out. I would just take them straight from this bag and put them in a soup or a stew. And they would be almost, uh, you almost would not know that they were there. Um, if you don't like eggplant, once you add them to a soup or a stew or a curry, you would not probably know that it is in there. So for if you did not, if someone did not like eggplant, this could be more like a filler to make the food go uh, farther. Okay, so got a bag of eggplant ready and a bag of sweet peppers are ready. So you all get the picture of how I put up my food and I had had these in here for a couple of days and needed to get them all put up. So I just wanted to share it with you all. And y'all, please let's remember all of our friends and our family who are in the path of this hurricane and keep them in our thoughts and our prayers. So I hope that y'all have enjoyed this video today and that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload a new video. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.